Gopi Khana Bala Bhajri Parta Hari Gopi Khana Bala Bhajri Parta Hari Yashodana Nidana Prajatana Nidana Yashodana Nidana Prajatana Nidana Yamuna Tira Vanasya Ya mona tera vana chahi Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Chaya Mudhiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu 
नित्यम भगवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नष्ट की हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्णा ओके so today being the auspicious to hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna <laughs> हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 बले पंचदाशंपम बले पंचदाशंपम बले पंचदाशम फिफ्टींथ इन द लाइन वमानकम विद्वार्थ ब्राह्मण बाय असम्शन और आगात वेंट अद्वराम अरिना ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस बाले ऑफ किंग बाले पदत्रायम थ्री स्टेप्स ओनली बैगिंग विलिंग एट हार्ट टू रिटर्न 
Shri Krishna Pam, the kingdom of the three planetary systems. Trans translation In the 15th incarnation, the Lord assumed the form of a dwarf Brahmana, Vamana, and visited the arena of sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Bali. Although at heart he was willing to regain the kingdom of the three planetary systems, he simply asked for a donation of three steps of land. Purport by Srila Prabhupada The Almighty God can bestow upon anyone the kingdom of the universe from a very small beginning and similarly he can take away the kingdom of the universe on the plea of begging a small piece of land. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chatsur Nilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadam Ayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Karo Shri Yadapada Kamalam Shri Karan Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sarvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nikamsya Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chagatpate Lopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaskate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rupyasya Kripa Sindhu Ayevacha Patitana Pavanevyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niki Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavani Pasyatya Desatani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadhi Gaur Bhattavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Translation again. In the 15th incarnation, the Lord assumed the form of a dwarf Brahmana, Vamana, and visited the arena of sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Bali. Although at heart he was willing to regain the kingdom of the three planetary systems, he simply asked for a donation of three steps of land. So, Lord Brahmana Dev is described in several places in Srimad Bhagavatam, particularly in the 8th canto, it's described in great detail. 
how Maharaj Bali had conquered the heavenly planets. Actually, even before the appearance of Lord Pramanadev, we are told about how Maharaj Bali, as a leader of the army of the demons, fought against the demigods. But initially, the power of the demigods was overwhelming and many demons were killed. And Bali himself was killed at one point. He had been killed by this by Indra. But Sukra Acharya had mystic power, and just by the touch of his hand, he was able to bring back many of the demons. So long as their bodies had not been cut into pieces, he was able to bring them back to life. So this happened to Maharaj Bali also. He had been killed, but Sukracharya brought him back to life. And so Bali Maharaj accepted Sukracharya as his guru. Certainly somebody can do something like that you have a lot of faith in them, that they must be very powerful. So Maharaj Bali surrendered himself to Shukracharya and he took instructions from Shukracharya. You should understand Shukracharya was not really a spiritual teacher. He was a materialistic guru and he was giving advice to the demons and how they could expand their power and how they could even conquer over the demigods and take control of the heavenly planets. So Shukra Acharya gave direction to Bali Maharaj to perform a great yagya known as Vishwajit Yagya. And by performing the sacrifice, the demons became very powerful. So much powerful that when they came to fight the demigods, the demigods were bewildered. They understood that the demons have become very powerful. So the demigods went to their guru. Just as the demons have their guru, the demigods also have their guru. The guru of the demigods was Brihaspati. And Brihaspati told the demigods that time was not in their favor. And the demons had become powerful because of executing the instructions of Shukra Acharya. And he advised the demigods that the best thing they could do would be to leave, to just disappear. So demigods have these kind of powers. They can transform themselves. They can assume different forms of life. They can appear in the form of birds or animals or even as a tree, or as a human, or they can even become invisible. So, Brihaspati told the demigods, it would be better for you just to get out of here, because the demons are coming and they want to conquer the heavenly planets. They want to take control of Indrapuri where the demigods headed by Indra were residing. So Bali Maharaj came there with his army and they the, demi the demigods all disappeared. So the demons took over the heavenly planets and Bali Maharaj was residing there. And Bali Maharaj was told by Shukracharya 
if you're going to remain here, you have to perform sacrifice because it was the heavenly planets. And to reside here, you have to do yajna, you have to perform sacrifice. And then by piety, by the pious acts which you will get from the sacrifice, you can stay here in the heavenly planets. So hearing this instruction from Sukradharya, Bali Maharaj performed many Ashwamedha Yajyas and he was residing there in the heavenly planets. However, the mother of the demigods, the mother of the demigods is known as Aditi and she is one of the wives of Kashyapa. Kashyapa had several wives, so Aditi was one of his principal wives and she was the mother of the demigods. So when the demigods all left, when they all disappeared from the heavenly planets, then Mother Aditi felt very morose. And it happened that Kashyapa, the husband, he'd gone off to do some meditation. Remember, this happened in the Satya Yuga. People live a long time. So, the process in the Satya Yuga was meditation. And Kashyapa would go off and do meditation and come back after a long time. So when he came back, he was surprised to see the condition of his ashram. He saw it looked very neglected. And when he saw his wife, Aditi, he saw her looking very morose. In other words, she was very miserable, very downcast. So, Kashyapa was concerned, what is wrong? And his wife then explained that, because my sons are not here anymore, I'm missing my sons. So Kashyapa thought he could enlighten his wife and he began to preach to her about the nature of the material world, how everything is temporary and we come together, we don't stay together forever. Relationships in the material world are all like that. They're very temporary, flickering. You know, you may have a husband, but how long he can stay with you? And you have children, how long will the children be with you? They will also grow up and go away. So Kashyapa was trying to enlighten his life with spiritual knowledge. However, it didn't make an impression on her. She was not so much convinced about this. So, Kashyapa then tried another approach. He told his wife, he said, there is one sacrifice you can do. There's a yajna which you perform. It's called Tapu Vrat. That you perform this vow and then you do it for eight days. And if you do it properly, you can please Lord Vishnu. So Kashyapa was telling his wife that you want to satisfy your desire, you have to please Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Controller and he can fulfill any of your desires. So he instructed his wife in performing this vow, Tapo Vrat. And for eight days, Aditi very strictly followed all the principles. And at the end of the eight days, Lord Vishnu appeared. And Lord Vishnu appeared in his form, forearm form, holding 
the conch and the cup and the kiss and the lotus flower, the dressed in yellow garments. Lord Vishnu appeared to Aditi and Kashya, and then they requested the Lord. They explained to the Lord the situation that our sons, the demigods, have gone away because the demons headed by Bali, they have taken over the heavenly planets by their spirit, by their powers, by the blessings of their Guru Sukracharya. They have conquered the demigods and taken over heaven. So then, hearing, understanding the thinking of a deity, Lord then took the form of a dwarf Brahmana. He took the form of a small Brahmana boy, dressed in a deer skin and with yellow cloth and uh, holding different symbols in his hands. He appeared he had instruments like a danda because he is a brahmachari. He had taken the form of a young brahmin boy. And uh, seeing this form, then Mother Aditi and Kashyapa, they offered their obeisances and they, were, they could understand something of the Lord's plan. So Lord Vamana Dev then proceeded to go to the place where Bali Maharaj was performing sacrifice. Bali Maharaj, under the directions of his guru, he was performing sacrifices regularly there. And part of the sacrifice was to give charity to the Brahmanas. Giving charity to Brahmanas is very auspicious for a person. And it's common knowledge from the Buddhas that the best charity is to give to Brahmanas. To give charity is a pious activity, but there is quality in giving charity. Charity can be done in the mode of ignorance. Just like if we give charity to a drug addict, then we would take the money and buy more drugs. So if you give charity to that kind of person, that is charity in the mode of ignorance. Charity in the mode of passion is done to get something to get something in return. You know, sometimes you think if I give charity, how much will I get back? Right? You should get something in return. In India, there's a common saying, Ek paisa dega das lak malega. Right? You give one paisa, but you get back ten lakhs. So that kind of charity, that is more in the mode of passion. People give in the mode of passion, they want to get recognition for their charity. But the highest charity is to give in the mode of goodness. And that is done without people knowing, and it should be done uh, in a holy place, and you should give it to a qualified person who will make good use of the charity. So that's why people would give charity to a brahmana, because a brahmana is expected that he will not do anything sinful. He will use whatever charity he is given, he will use it for the service of God. And if you give charity to a, a brahmana who is educated, it's even better. And if you can give it to the pure devotee, that is the highest charity and it will come back an unlimited amount. So, Bali Maharaj was giving charity to the Brahmanas. 
we see also in Krishna Lila, Jara Sangha, although he was also a friend of Kamsa and he was a demon, he gave charity to Brahmanas and in order to remove Jarasandha, Lord Krishna came there along with Bhim and Arjuna to request charity from Jarasandha. Jarasandha uh, could not recognize them because they came, they came disguised as Brahmanas. They were disguised as Brahmanas wearing the sinful cloth of a Brahmana, but at the same time he could understand that there's, some, there's something suspicious about these Brahmanas. Because usually Brahmanas are weak and skinny, and not very strong. But here is Bhima, he is very powerful. And Arjuna, you know, the great Kshatriyas. And not only that, but they speak with so much authority. Because one of the qualities of the Kshatriyas is they have Ishwara power. They have the power to control others. They speak with full authority. So they came there to see Jarasandha dressed as Brahmanas. But Jarasandha could understand, I don't think they're real Brahmanas. But anyway, he thought, they've come as Brahmanas, I should give them charity. And so they, they asked, they said, yeah, we would like a fight. One of us would like to fight with you. So Jarasandha said, oh, he, he looked at Krishna and said, no, I'm not going to fight you. He said, you ran away from the battle last time I fought you. You're a coward. You're a rancher. I'm not fighting you. And he looked at Arjuna and said, you're not strong enough for me. You won't be a good battle for me. I want to fight someone who will give me a good battle. And he said to him, you will be good for me. I will fight you. And so Bhima and Jarasandha fought for many days. And then finally, of course, Krishna told Arjuna how he could defeat, he told Bhima rather, how he could defeat Jarasandha by ripping him down the middle. Because he was born in two halves. His name is Jarasandha. He was joined by the witch Jara. So then Bhima understood. And so he managed to take hold of one of Jarasandha's legs and with his foot he kept the other foot on the ground and he ripped him right down the middle into two halves. So in this way Jarasandha was defeated and then Maharaj Yudhisthira was then able to go on and perform the Raja Surya sacrifice. Anyway, Bali Maharaj wanted to give charity. Sukracharya had told him, give charity to the Brahmins. It will be very good for you. So this is why Lord Vamanade has appeared in the form of a Brahmana. And he's come as a young boy. Because everyone loves young children and they think he is very innocent. He is just a young boy. If it comes older Brahmana, they wonder, oh, are you married? What kind of family have you got? How many children have you? You know, they'll be more inquisitive. But a young boy comes and is very innocent. So, Bali Maharaj was very attracted to see this young boy, so effulgent and coming forward, requesting charity. Of course, Sukacharya, the guru of Bali Maharaj, was present at the time, and Sukracharya was suspicious that this is something very unusual. Who is this Brahmin boy? We never saw him before. Where did he come from? And he is very unusual. 
be a self empowerment. That's what Kracharya understand. This may be the personality of Godhead himself coming to take away everything from Bali Maharaj. Actually, Bali Maharaj was a devotee, but he was attached to material possessions. Like most of us, right? You have some material possessions, you're attached to them. You're attached to your home, you're attached to your car, you're attached to your property. This attachment is an obstacle to our devotion to Krishna. So Krishna comes, the Lord comes as he came as Lord Vamanadi, and he is going to adjust the situation. Because Bali Maharaj had attachment and he had taken the heavenly planets. He conquered the whole of heaven and he is occupying it with his demons. So Lord Bamana Dev has come and he is going to take everything away from him. Prabhupada said one time, he said, God is like someone with ten arms. We only have two arms. If God wants to give you with ten arms, He can give you so much. Just like He gave to Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj is conquering the whole universe. He become the universal controller. But the Lord can also take everything away. He can give with ten arms and if He wants to take, he can take away everything also. So it happened, Bali Maharaj had come into the arena of sacrifice. But Vamanadev brother is there to please come to Bali Maharaj begging charity. And Bali Maharaj is very happy to give charity to him. But Sukracharya is very cautious. Sukracharya, remember, he is a, a Sukshukra, Prabhupada explained the word Shukra means semen. So the Sukracharya, he was an Acharya based on his birth. He was not actually a spiritual Acharya, but based on his own birth, he had taken in he had taken birth in the family of Acharyas, but they were Acharyas only in the material arts, material knowledge. And they were concerned in giving material benefit for their students and their disciples. So Shukra Acharya was very worried that if this Brahmana boy is Vishnu, then he can take everything away. So Sukracharya thought, if he takes everything away, how will I maintain myself? Because Bali Maharaj is maintaining me. He's looking after me and all of my family and all of my other followers. They're all being maintained by Bali Maharaj. But if he loses everything, then how will we all survive? So thinking like this, Sukracharya told Bali Maharaj, don't give this person. But the Bali Maharaj thought, well, I've already promised him. I've given a promise. You know, giving our word a promise is very important. Just like today, the devotees are accepting initiation. So giving promise, we make a vow to follow certain conditions, certain rules, principles. Very important. 
that we speak, we follow them, that we keep our promise. So Bali Maharaj was also concerned that, you know, I promised him, I told him, I would give what he wanted, I offered him charity. But Shukra Acharya said, no, no, it's all right. In certain conditions, you can break your promise. Sometimes, in order to protect the life of someone, you can lie. In order to uh, save someone from danger, you can break your promise. You can tell something which is not true. Yet, and Shukracharya gave different evidences to support this. And he was telling Bali Maharaj that it's very risky. If you will give him charity, then he can take everything from you. So Bali Maharaj was confused what to do. But previously, he told me to give charity to the brahmanas and now he's telling me not to give. What should, what should I do? If I give and if he takes everything away, then I'll lose everything. But he thought, if he does take everything away, if I give it to him, it's better I give it to him than he takes it. Because if I give it to him, then I get the fame, I get the credit that I was very charitable, that I gave to him. And if he is the, the Supreme Lord, then he can take it from me anyway. And if he takes it from me without my without me wanting to give it to him, then I won't get any credit. I'll be I'll just lose everything. So he thought it's better I will give it to him. Because then I will get the credit. I will get the you could say, well, that's the mode of passion, right? You want to get the credit for giving something. But anyway, Bali Maharaj considered the situation and he decided definitely it will be better if I give on my own without him taking it. The problem, however, of course, is the instruction of his own guru. So this is a very important example in the scriptures that sometimes you have to disobey the order of the Guru. And you see how Bali Maharaj, although Sutra Acharya had saved him, brought him back from death, and he had faith in Sutra Acharya, that when, when the Lord came, and Shukracharya is saying, don't give him, then at that time he gave up the relationship with Shukracharya. He thought, well, he is telling me not to give, but before he told me to give, so I think I should give. It's better for me to give and have some fame than to lose everything and have no thing. So Shukracharya warned his disciple Bali, he said, if you give him, if you disobey my orders, you will go to hell. He will take everything from you and you will be put into the lower region of the universe. You will be put into the hellish regions. Actually, the lower region of the universe is where the demons reside. They're meant to reside in the lower regions of the universe. But sometimes they become ambitious and they want to expand their power. 
and they come up to the heavenly planets and challenge the demigods and try to take over. So this is what happened Bali Maharaj was in this situation and Bhagavamana Deva is there requesting charity. Bali Maharaj was surprised when he asked him what charity he wanted. Bhagavamana Deva said, I simply want three steps of land. So Bali Maharaj said, well, I can give you much more. You're only a small boy. Three steps of land will not be very much. He said, I can give you a whole kingdom. I can give you wealth like you cannot imagine. And I can give you many wives also. You can have all kinds of opulence. But Lord Vamana Dev told Bali Maharaj, no, I'll be happy. Just give me three steps of land. If a person is not happy with three steps of land, they will not be happy with three planets. Doesn't matter how much you give. You have to be satisfied. So in this way, Lord Vamana Dev convinced Bali Maharaj that he should just allow him to have three steps of land. Put the phone on. Okay. So Lord Vamana Dev even glorified the, the forefathers of Bali Maharaj. Lord Vamana Dev knew that Bali Maharaj is coming in the line of demons and the demons were Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha and all the demons they descend from those two brothers. So Lord Vamana Dev to encourage, to encourage Bali Maharaj to give charity. He said, you are coming from such a great family, such noble personalities, and Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha, certainly they were great souls, and you would be so fortunate to come in a line descending from this family. So you should be happy to give charity for them. In this way, Lord Vamana Dev was encouraging Bali Maharaj, and so Bali Maharaj then proceeded to give the charity. And then Lord Vamana Dev assumed a gigantic form. And with one step, he covered all the earth. And with his body and his hands, he covered everything in space. And he covered in the whole universe with two steps. And after covering the universe in two steps, Lord Vamanadi then took Bali Maharaj as a prisoner. And he tied him up with the ropes of Varuna. And he said to Bali Maharaj, You have cheated me. You have promised me three steps. But where am I supposed to take the third step? I have covered everything you possess. The whole universe is mine. Where am I supposed to take the third step? So Bali Maharaj was bowed to truthfulness. It's a very important quality. Just like Lord Ramachandra's father, Maharaj Dasara, he was vowed to being truthful. And when Taikei came, when his, one of his wives came and demanded that Lord Brahma should go to the forest for, for 14 years, 
then he could not break his promise because she knew that he vowed to be truthful. And he had said, better I will die than tell a lie. That was the mood of the great kings in the past. And similarly, Maharaj used fear. He did not ever want to lie. And because he did not tell any lie, he was very powerful. And it said his chariot did not even touch the ground. It, it was above the air. And, this, and when Maharaj Yudhisthir was requested by Lord Krishna to lie, then it was, a, it was a problem. Lord Krishna wanted someone to say that Ashwatthama is dead because they could not defeat Drona in the Kurukshetra war. Drona, Dronacharya was fighting so brilliantly, no one could defeat him. So Lord Krishna told them, tell him that his son Ashwatthama is dead. But they thought, Maharaj Yudhishthir thought, no, no, I cannot tell a lie. But Krishna said, no, you tell him, because you're known to be truthful. And if you tell him, then he will believe. Krishna said, if I tell him, he won't believe me. Because I sometimes have to tell lies. I'm from Vrindavan, you know, so Vrindavan people like that. So, anyway, my Yudhisthira was reluctant to tell a lie. And because he hesitated, he lost his power. He didn't lose his power because he told a lie, but he lost his power because he hesitated to follow Lord Krishna's instruction. So, Maharaj Yudhisthira told the lie and then we were able to defeat Dronacharya. That's the battle of Kurukshetra. Anyway, Bali Maharaj is worried also. He wants to keep his vow of being truthful. And he's in the city, he's being taken a prisoner. He's tied up in ropes like a common criminal. And before him, there are his family members, his wife, his children, his grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj has also come. And they see Bali Maharaj tied up like a prisoner in ropes placed before Lord Vamana Day. And what has he done? He has not kept his promise. But then, when the, when the final effort came to keep his promise, Bali Maharaj then requested Lord Brahmanadev, you can take the third step on my head. Because my body is not part of the universe. So you can take the third step on my head. And in this way, Bali Maharaj kept his vow of truthfulness. At the same time, however, it was arranged that because Shukracharya was not pleased with him, he had to go down to the lower region of the universe. He had to go back to Sutala Loka in the lower region of the universe. But that place, Siddhala Loka, is more opulent than anything within the universe. It is supreme, the most opulent place, even more opulent than any of the heavenly planets. And that is where Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj also resides there now. And Lord Manadev said, don't worry, I'm also coming with you and I will be there as your doorkeeper to protect you from any disturbance. If any intruders will come there, I will be there to stop them. And it is said even today, Lord Bhamanade is residing there as a doorkeeper for Bali Maharaj.
in the lower region of the universe. And it said in the eighth Manvantara, Bali Maharaj at that time will again become Indra, the king of heaven. So he will get back his opulence in the future. Anyway, Bali Maharaj is an important example in the scriptures because it shows us how he surrendered everything for the service of the Lord. Krishna sometimes will take away opulence from the devotee just to help them to surrender more. And Srila Prabhupada also quoted the verse in 10th canto, it is described, Harishetad Dhanam Shalai, where Krishna said, when I am especially merciful to someone, then I take away all of their opulence. Then, in that helpless condition, then they surrender to me. So, Bali Maharaj is our Acharya in the process of devotional service, which is known as Atmani Vedana, or surrendering everything to the Lord. Bali Maharaj surrendered everything. He gave up even his own body to the Lord. And he had a lot to surrender. What do we have to surrender? We have some house, little house. We have some little opulence here in the material world. Bali Maharaj had the whole heavenly planets. Everything was his. And he gave up everything to the service of the Lord. And he gave it to Lord Brahmanade. He surrendered to him. So this Atmani Vedanam, it is one of the most difficult forms of devotional service to perform. We are encouraged to concentrate on Shravanam and Kirtan, hearing and chanting. We need to make a foundation for our devotion by regularly hearing and chanting. And then we can go on and maybe gradually come on to other kinds of devotional service like taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, worshipping the Lord, offering prayers to the Lord, even becoming a friend of the Lord, remembering the Lord. But becoming a friend, that is also more challenging. One has to be a very advanced devotee to actually develop friendly relationship with the Lord. And surrendering everything is probably the most difficult of all the nine processes of bhakti. But Bali Maharaj did it. Of course, he was very fortunate. Although he was born in a demon family, he had a grandfather who was a great devotee. And that grandfather was, of course, Prahlad Maharaj. And by association with his great grandfather, Bali Maharaj, he developed also some devotion. At the same time, he was a demon. He had taken birth in the demon family. So he had led the demon army and he had conquered the demigods. But Lord came again and took everything away and sent him back down into their place in the lower region of the universe. So this wonderful appearance of Lord Vamanade took place today. On the midday, it said, Lord Vamanade appeared. So today we are, we are remembering this wonderful appearance of Lord Vamana. He is one of the important avatars of the Lord. How he comes and with 
by taking steps he is able to cover the universe. It's also said that when he extended his foot, that one of the toes pierced the covering of the universe. The universe is like a shell, and we are inside the shell, and when the Lord extended his foot to cover the universe, his foot pierced the covering, and from that covering it allowed the, the water of the casual ocean to enter in through the hole in the covering. When the water from the hole in the covering entered, it flowed, it came into the universe, and it flew down the universe, and it became the water of the Ganges. We have the water of the holy Ganges, which is said to be that water which comes from the hole in the covering of the universe. It is the water of the casual ocean. And that water is especially powerful because it washed the lotus feet of Lord Brahmanity. So we are, when we drink Ganges water, we are drinking the Abhishek water of Lord Brahmanity. It has washed his lotus feet. So this pastime of Lord Brahmanity's appearance is very instructive for us. We see how Bali Maharaj could reject the order of his seminal guru, even though he had great faith and yet he was indebted to his guru for his very life. He still gave up the order of his guru in order to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, we have to understand that there are such persons, sometimes uh, representing themselves as acharyas or spiritual teachers, but their purpose is not spiritual. Their purpose is material, to help you prosper materially. So when we are given the opportunity to do service for the Supreme Lord, for the Personality of Godhead, then we should put aside the material obligations, material duties, and give everything for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. That is for our great benefit. And this is the example we learn from Bali Maharaj. So, Prahlad Maharaj appreciated so much the mercy of Lord Brahmanade. That Lord Brahmanade came in his form as a Brahmin God to teach a lesson to his grandson, Bali Maharaj. He taught him the lesson. Don't be attached to material possessions. Don't let them obstruct your devotion to the Supreme Lord. That is the important thing. The goal of life is to surrender to the Supreme Lord. And if the Lord comes and there's an opportunity to surrender to Him, we should take it. It's certainly a great blessing. So Bali Maharaj praised Lord Vamanadev and his kindness in coming and purifying Bali Maharaj and taking away his material attachment. Okay, so are there any questions, anybody? So I, I think we can finish here, Kripa Sindhu Prabhu. Well, you can say Prahlad Maharaj is like his spiritual master. 
as his grandfather. Do not actually hear anything about him taking another spiritual master, but you can see that he had been benefited by association with his grandfather, and so he had that devotion, a devotional service. But he did, because he was in the demon family, he had a lot of attachments to material things. So Lord Bhamanade was personally taking away his attachment. You can, so you can see, you know, the Lord has come as his guru and also as Bhamanade. He is taking away that attachment. The Lord Vamanaji, while he is the Supreme Lord, he is also coming as a Brahmana, as a teacher, as a guru for Bali Maharaj, to teach him. So Bali Maharaj was so fortunate. Of course, some people who say he was very unfortunate, he lost all of his wealth. You know, some people, when they lose their wealth, it's unbearable for them. There was one big businessman in Hong Kong. He had a big business. He was making toys, and he was exporting toys to America. So it happened that at one point, one of his very big shipments, which had been sent to America, they used a paint which had a deadly chemical in it. So when the, when the toys got to America and the customs examined, they saw that these toys are all painted with this paint which has got some deadly chemical. It's very dangerous. So they said the whole shipment has to be rejected. And so it was a huge amount of money for the man. And the man when he heard that his shipment was all destroyed, he could not bear it. He committed suicide. He thought, there's no purpose to live anymore. I've lost all my money. So sometimes people like that, they lose, when they lose their opulence, it's unbearable for them. But here you see Bali Maharaj. He had lost everything. He lost all of it as well, but he did not lose his truthfulness. He kept his honesty, and he was able to think how to give the third step to Lord Vamanadi. So in this way, Bali Maharaj has got great fame. He has got great fame. He is here in the Shastras for his honesty, for his integrity, for his devotion and his complete surrender. So that is worth more than any kind of wealth or opulence of the material world. To be known for his honesty and his good character. Okay? All right, so we will stop here today. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shrotopati. Right.